we've already completed a basic set of financial statements encompassing the statement of earnings also called the income statement the statement of changes in equity also called the statement of changes in shareholders equity and the statement of financial position oh and we did the statement of cash flows direct method our focus was on IFRS statements IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards in this question I want to go beyond that to focus on more complex financial statements we're still going to focus on IFRS financial statements but I will also introduce you to the differences between the statements required for IFRS and those required under ASPE accounting standards for private enterprises let's get started prepare the income statement also called the statement of earnings the statement of changes in equity and the statement of financial position for a merchandising company one what is a merchandising company well a merchandising company can be either a retailer or a wholesaler a retailer sells goods finished goods to the public a wholesaler is an entity that actually takes finished goods from a manufacturer and then resells it to retailers both companies are in the business of selling finished goods wholesalers sell finished goods to retailers retailers sell finished goods to the public that's what a merchandising company is let's move down to the question produce the financial statements for a merchandising company following IFRS you'll notice that the name of the company is Jonan limited and the year ended is September 30th 2020 I've got a huge list of accounts in a previous video I introduced you to the differences between current assets and non-current assets in this video I'm going to subdivide non-current assets into their common subcategories remember from my previous video that current assets are assets that will be converted into cash or they're going to be used or consumed within the upcoming year from the financial statement date non-current assets are those that will be converted into cash or used or consumed beyond the one-year mark previously in my videos I just divided between current assets and non-current assets but non-current assets actually have subcategories let's look at those subcategories I'm going to do them in the order that they should appear on the financial statements the first subcategory is long-term investments long-term investments are investments in the shares or the bonds of another corporation they'll be used to generate revenue in the future in the form of either interest income or capital gains but long-term investments are always listed first because they will be converted into cash next is property plant and equipment this subcategory is also called fixed assets or capital assets these are long-lived assets that help the company to generate revenue moving forward they are always physical assets so possible things in property plant and equipment would be land building furniture and fixtures computers anything having to do with a physical asset which is used to generate revenue next we have intangibles intangibles are non-physical they're considered legal rights they are also used to generate revenue in the future and they encompass things such as a copyright a patent or a brand name it can also be a license or a franchise moving on next is goodwill goodwill is a separate non-current asset which represents the excess paid for an other company above its fair value we're going to cover that in a future video but just note it's its own subcategory under non-current assets finally we have other assets other assets is a catch-all non-current asset grouping it includes every account that does not belong in any of the other categories now I've introduced you to all the subcategories of non-current assets let's just remind ourselves about the other categories used when categorizing accounts in order to produce the financial statements in good form remember that liabilities only have two categories current liabilities which will be settled within one year of the financial statement date these will be settled through an outflow of resources either cash goods or services the next category for liabilities is non-current liabilities these will be settled beyond the one-year date next we've got equity equity only has one category 
Then, revenues. Revenues, again, have only one category. It is all amounts earned by either providing a service or delivering a good. Note the past tense. It represents all the income earned. And then finally, we have expenses. Expenses I denote with an X because I've already used the E. Expenses are the amounts that have been used, consumed, or incurred to help generate revenue. Now that I've reminded you about all the subcategories into which we have to categorize all accounts, we can go back to the questions to start categorizing the accounts. Let's start categorizing. Land. This is part of property, plant, and equipment. Income tax expenses is an expense. Trading investments. These are investments that will be traded in the short term. Investments are an asset because they're going to provide us with a future benefit. So this would be a current asset. Cost of goods sold is the one expense account that does not use the word expense. Supplies expense is an expense. Accounts receivable. That's the legal right to collect cash from our customers. Current asset. Repair and maintenance expense. Expense. Prepaid insurance. Prepaids are an asset because they will provide us with benefits in the future. So it's a current asset. Supplies. Also used in the future to help generate revenue. Current asset. Sales returns and allowances represents the sales that have been returned by a customer. As a consequence, it reduces sales revenue. And if it reduces sales revenue, it belongs in the revenue category. Salaries payable. Anything that uses the word payable is a liability. No indication it's long term, so it's a current liability. Cash. Current asset. Bank loan payable due in 2024. We look to see what is the financial statement date, and it is 2020. We see it right up here. Since that is 2020, and we're going to pay this in four years, this is a non-current liability. Interest revenue. Revenue. Let's just move down the page. Common shares. This is part of equity. Sales discount. Sales discounts are a discount that we give our customer for paying early. Since it reduces the amount of sales revenue, it is also part of the revenue category. Inventory, current asset. Sales revenue, revenue. Accounts payable. Again, has the word payable, it's a current liability. Accumulated depreciation building. This is part of property, plant, and equipment. It indicates the total value that has been used up in the past from the building. Property, plant, and equipment. Accumulated depreciation equipment. Again, property, plant, and equipment. Interest expense. Expense. Salaries expense. Expense. Depreciation expense. Expense. Retained earnings on October 1st. That would have been at the beginning of the year, and that's part of equity. Dividends, part of equity. Utilities expense, expense. Equipment, property, plant, and equipment. Buildings, property, plant, and equipment. And finally, insurance expense, expense. Once all the accounts are categorized, it's pretty easy to produce the financial statements because now it's not a critical thinking question, it's simply a structure question. Note we also have additional information. This additional information will be important and we'll see it being used as we create the statements, which we'll start doing in the next video.